We are in the early end game and we figured out another build for Rend inside Diablo 4 for our Barbarian build. So we did have a strictly focused all Ren build, but now we opted after having some conversations with my chat in stream as well as in Discord to do this Iron Maelstrom or Bloody Maelstrom build along with Steel Grasp. Okay, so this build focuses heavily on dealing large amounts of bleeding damage along with stun as well as clearing super, super fast with the Iron Maelstrom ability and also grouping enemies super, super good with Steel Grass, okay? This build is very, very good. We're gonna be moving really, really fast. We're gonna be grouping enemies up and we're gonna be dealing loads of bleed damage and just destroying everything on the map. So we're gonna go over everything that you need for the build, how to play it, and what gear pieces that you need to make this work. So guys, we are in the early end game and we are doing Iron Maelstrom, or for what my chat tells me, Bloody Maelstrom. They talked to me about this yesterday and was telling me that this is what I should be playing over the other build variant that we had for the build. So this build focuses on using Iron Maelstrom as well as Steel Grasp to group up all the enemies while applying Rend and still dealing an incredible amount of bleed damage and then just destroying them all out in one go with Iron Maelstrom. So let's get into the skills and abilities that you're gonna need for the build. Okay, so this build is gonna be very, very similar to our previous one, which is our early end game build. This is not a leveling build at all, but this is definitely one that you can take all the way to the end game. So starting off, we're gonna be doing Lunging Strike into Combat Lunging Strike. The reason that we're opting for Lunging Strike off of Flay is because we don't necessarily need the additional vulnerability and or bleed. We're already gonna be applying so much bleed, it's gonna be insane anyway. But we wanna be able to Berserk to really capitalize on our Iron Maelstrom here. So that way we can have all of our damage ones on all three swings do the most it can, okay? So we're gonna be doing Lunging Strike for the crit strikes to get Berserking for 1.5 seconds. And then we're going to come down. Of course, we are maxing out Rend. Rend is still our main damage dealer here. We're still going to be applying bleed with Rend through the entire duration. But we're going to be, you know, instead of Rend being the solid damage dealer, we're going to be able to <clears throat> clear entire rooms with Iron Maelstrom uh, building off of the bleed from Rend. So we're taking that into Ferocious Rend for more uh, Fury Gen so we can spam more. Then we're going to come down to our defensive skills here. <clears throat> we're only going to be using two of the three shouts guys and i'm going to explain why so for starters that we really are going to be focusing on using steel grasp uh, and lunging strike to provide our berserking so that way we're not actually opting into war cry however war cry is still very very strong and i still think that there are times where we can swap steel grasp out for war cry if you still want to do triple shouts I've been testing with them back and forth. However, I do really like the grouping mechanism of Steel Grasp, and we got a little bonus tip for you when it comes to using that. But we are going to be taking Rallying Cry into Tactical Rallying Cry for the Fury Generation and Initial Fury on cast. And then we are maxing out Challenging Shout, going into Tactical Challenge Shout, so that way we can get the more Fury. But more importantly, this is probably one of the biggest debuffs uh, for the enemies here, so that way they get taunted and they have damage reduction for 8.9 seconds, which actually turns out to be a lot more once we have all of our bonuses stacked on. But Challenging Shout is your main shout here. Then we're going to come down and we're taking Max Booming Voice, one point in Raid Leader, and three in Gutter Yell. So that way um, we get a lot of damage reduction from uh, all of the enemies. One point into Aggressive Resistance for more damage reduction while we are Berserking. Prolific, prolific Fury for while we're Berserking, we get more Fury Gen. Then we're going to come down to our Weapon Master skills, guys. We're still taking Pit Fighter and No Mercy for the increased damage and increased crit strike chance against the uh, immobilized, stunned, or slowed enemies. This is always going to be triggering since we're taking Hamstring for the slow, and then with our bludgeoning weapons, we're always going to be able to stun. So we got one point in Hamstring for the slow, and then we got three points in Cut to the Bone. So that way our bleeding effects deal even more damage against vulnerable enemies. Every enemy is going to be vulnerable no matter what, so you have nothing to worry about. Then we're taking one point into Thick Skin for more Fortify, and then Counter Offensive max at three points. So while we're Fortified over 50% of our max life, we deal 12 times increased damage. Uh, and then we're going to come down and we're taking Steel Grasp, okay? Steel Grasp is going to be one of our MVP skills for the build. We're taking this. This is what's going to be a chain that pulls all of these enemies in, and it's going to group them up to make using Random Maelstrom just even easier. Steel Grass also makes enemies vulnerable for three seconds, which is really nice. And then we're doing Fighter Steel Grass, so that way damaging enemies gains Berserking for two seconds. We want to stack this up as much as we can. 
Then we're coming down to our ultimates here. We're taking Iron Maelstrom, Prime Iron Maelstrom, into Supreme Iron Maelstrom for the cooldown, but more importantly, just all the damage modifiers, the increased crit chance, and crit damage. Then we're going to be taking three ranks in Wallop for while we're using bludgeoning weapons because we're still going to be using a hammer as well as a sword for the increased damage against Stun or Vulnerable. And then Concussion, on Lucky Hits, we have an additional chance to stun. Now, our key passive here that we chose is actually Unconstrained. Uh, Gushing Wounds still works just fine. You could definitely do this if you really wanted to. Uh, I've been kind of going back and forth, so I'm going to showcase the one with Unconstrained. The clip in the footage that you guys saw at the beginning of the video was using Gushing Wounds. But we're going to show off Unconstrained that just works out. You could also do Walking Arsenal just for the increased damage. However, you're gonna, you are going to lose some um, extra crit strike damage on this fall off if you swap to this. So those are the abilities here, guys. Now into our gear here, guys. So there's a lot of things that are happening with this build. It hasn't changed too much. However, there is one item that I would really like to change. And that is probably just taking off Limitless Rage for the... Um, where is it? Uh, not Retribution. Uh, for Smiting. So we have the increased crit chance and then we get the additional crowd control duration, which would be really, really strong here. However, it is not required. So... We have uh, Audacity, so we get the stun when five or more enemies are around. Then we have uh, Anemia for the direct damage against bleeding enemies has a chance to stun them. Very important on a lucky hit. Then we got Retribution for more damage against stunned enemies. Disobedience for more armor. Uh, Exploiters for more damage against uh, unstoppable enemies as well as the increased crowd control duration. That's why this paired with Smiting is so strong because then you get so much crowd control. It's absolutely insane. Then, of course, we have uh, Skull Breaker's Bone Breaker here. Stunning a bleeding enemy deals 80% of their total bleed amount as physical. This is why this build is so crazy strong. We pair this with Berserker Ripping. Whenever you deal direct damage while berserking, inflict that much damage or 52% of the base damage dealt as additional bleeding. So these just stack over and over again. And then when we hit with our lucky hit on our adventurers or one of our passives, we deal all this bleeding damage as physical instantly. It's so good. Accelerating for attack speed. Then we have Limitless Rage for each point of fury generated. We do more damage with Rend. In our amulet, we got Edge Masters for while we're at full, we deal more damage. And then both of our rings, of course, are the Bold Chieftains and Echoing Fury just to get our stuff back. That's why I have this on here mainly because I've been swapping back and forth between the Triple Shouts. But we are going to showcase Steel Grasp here because the Bloody Maelstrom is really, really strong. Our expertise is going to be two-handed expertise for the increased damage against vulnerable enemies. However, if you really wanted to opt, you could do two-handed sword, which is actually really, really good. But it does require a two-handed uh, weapon when doing this. However, we are going to be doing um, dual wielding with all of this. So that way we can stack our bludgeoning damage with a mace and then using our bleed damage with a sword. Uh, however, the other opt for this is that you drop some of those skills and put them into defense. Uh, reduction skills in there and you just use your two-handed for uh maelstrom or rend so we have this going in here we got the bludgeoning here it's going to be really really strong so we're going to showcase this a little bit the paragon board hasn't changed too much but the build plays pretty simple what we're going to do is we're going to pop war cry we're going to pop challenging shout to get the debuff on all the enemies we're going to hit some lunging strikes to get some uh berserker going then we're going to group them up with steel grasp and then we're going to Maelstrom them after we cast Rend a few times to stack some bleeding damage. Now, one thing I do want to note here is, before I showcase this uh, at this end, is that when you use Steel Grass, as you guys can see, it pulls them. I got a way to, like, swing. So a real, a real good way to, like, counter this is when you do Steel Grasp is you can dash and then instantly attack, and it's no big deal. There's also other times where it feels like the delay between them is fine and i can still swing but if you guys are feeling that it is a bit clunky from what a lot of people have said and i felt this when i when i first started using the build but dashing out is really really good so if you have boots that give you extra evades um this is really strong because you can just grasp evade out and lunging strike back in and then rend everything it does make it feel a little clunky however it is still very strong so let's go ahead and do this we're gonna go down pop Get some wrens, right? Steel Grasp, Iron Maelstrom, kills everything on the board. It is so good. 
Get some ren, get some ren. Steel grass. Iron maelstrom. Just wipe everything. It's so good. Just stack up that bleeding. Stack up that bleeding. Pull. The only negative I will say is that after clearing, you do lose, like, the Maelstrom cooldown is just so long. However, like, you're still playing Ren. That's why I say Maelstrom is not, is not the main damage dealer here. Make sure I don't die to that. But the build is so good, man. It's so fun. And it's so different than, like, something I've, like, the normal Ren I'd play. Oh, pop this. Wipe. Okay, let's go over Paragon board so that way you guys can know what I am rocking. So we are still in the early game, so I do want to preface that this is not perfect and it's always subject to change. Subject to change. This is kind of building off of our original rend. So I haven't, I like tested it with just this, and it's been working just fine. So there should, there could be some changes in the future. Just look for the build guide from Mobilitics down in the description below. So we're going to come up and we're taking Brawn for more physical damage. Into Exploit, as always, for the vulnerability damage. Then we come over here and grab Iron Strength for Armor and Strength. As well as Raw Power and all the corresponding nodes for more physical damage and strength. Our next board is going to be Weapon Master, which we're not actually taking. But we're going to come up and we're going to grab Raw Power for more physical damage and strength. Uh, Hunter Killer for more damage against Elites and Move Speed with all the corresponding Glyphs. Or uh, nodes, and then we're taking uh, Marshall for, to help with shout cooldown re reduction, as well as iron strength for more armor and strength with the corresponding nodes here. <clears throat> Our third board, we're going to come over and grab Warbringer, which is going to be the first legendary node that we get. After spending 75 Fury, we gain more Fortify. This is the only other way to Fortify, which I actually didn't think about, so we could really. Go back into our skills and just keep this off of that for the resource cost reduction on uh, Rally and Cry. Now, so, we're going to come over here. I forgot all about that. That's how bad I am at this game. Uh, then we're going to, after we get Warbringer for the Fortify, we're going to be grabbing uh, Territorial for everything is up close and personal. Yes, at the farthest reaches of the Maelstrom, we're not getting the damage close. But everything else as we pull them in is going to be close. We're going to go up and grab raw power from more physical damage and the corresponding notes here. Then we're going to grab Hunter, Hungering Fury for max Fury and Fury on kill with the corresponding notes for more Fury on kill, which is very important. Then in the fourth board, we're taking Decimator, which we're not actually using. But we take this board just to come up and grab this node, which is going to be Disembowel. Killing a bleeding enemy has a 10% chance to reduce the cooldown of our non-active cooldowns by one second, which is mainly going to be our shouts, okay? This also will help us with steel grass. Isn't necessary. We mainly just have this for our shouts. So, guys, that is the Paragon board. That is the bloody Maelstrom from what my chat tells me or the Maelstrom build. It really, really works out really strong. The rotation is very, very different than just running up and running people after triple shouting. But I actually find that this is really, really good. It plays very, very strong against um, large mobs really well in groups. And you're actually kind of speedy still. Uh, not having the war cry shout here you can maybe swap one of these out but unfortunately you have to have the unstoppable and then the damage reduction here is just too good so this is the one that we are dropping so guys that is the maelstrom bloody rend build i hope you guys really do enjoy it drop a like on the video if you guys have enjoyed it comment down below what do you guys think subscribe if you guys are new and as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace